Uh, oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Hi, my name is Christopher Crane, and I'm a student here at Texas State University and the manager of the aquarium here at the Meadows Center for Water and the Environment. Right now, the aquarium is closed and our educational tours are on hiatus, but we can't just turn all of our aquariums off. So my staff and I are working daily to make sure that all of our aquarium residents are happy, healthy, and well-fed. But since we are closed, we saw an opportunity to share with y'all a little bit more up-close and in-depth information about all the different kinds of creatures in our aquariums. So my coworkers and I will be sharing videos featuring all the different kinds of cool fish, amphibians, and reptiles that we keep on display here in the aquarium. All of these can be found in Spring Lake, or in the case of the Texas Blind Salamander, beneath our feet in the caves of the Edwards Aquifer. That's right, unlike most public aquariums, we aren't stocked with exotic species from around the world. Instead, our goal is to provide you with face-to-face -face encounters with some of the different species that live here in Spring Lake. Many of the species in our aquarium can be found in Central Texas waterways. However, there are a few species that are unique to the conditions of the Edwards Aquifer. One species that most people consider to be a unique and endemic species to this area is the Texas Blind Salamander, located beneath our feet in the Edwards Aquifer. The Texas Blind Salamander, Uresia rathbunai, is a troglobitic or cave-adapted and neotenic or juvenile characteristic retaining amphibian in the genus Uresia or brook salamanders. Brook salamanders are found all over the United States and many of their species have the characteristics of what you'd consider to just be a normal salamander. They start their lives as water-breathing larvae, sort of like tadpoles, but looking more like lizards with big feathery red gills. As they mature, they lose their gills and develop slimy, often multicolored and spotted or striped skin. As adults, they live under rocks or in decaying logs in humid forest areas across North America. Does that sound much like the kind of creature you see here? The Texas blind salamander is an outlier among its relatives. First of all, they have no skin pigmentation. There's no light inside the caves of the Edwards Aquifer, so they've developed without the need for any kind of patterns or colors. What good is camouflage if no one can see anything anyway? And since no one can see anything, why have eyes? That's right, look closely and you can see that the blind salamander is accurately named. Where their eyes might be, instead there is, well, nothing. Except some tiny dots where the eyes would otherwise have developed, but you have to look pretty close to see them. Okay, so the blind salamander is blind and lives in a totally lightless environment. At this point, you may be wondering how it survives without being able to see where it's going, or how it gets its food, or what it eats. Well, first of all, there's no light in the aquifer caves, remember? And without light, there's no plant growth. Pretty much all salamanders are predators that feed on both insects and other invertebrates, like worms and small crustaceans. So if you guess that the blind salamander eats aquatic invertebrates that live in the aquifer caves, you'd be right. And how does it find its food and find its way around? Well, they have very acute sense of vibration in the water. So when something, like a cave amphipod, basically a tiny blind shrimp-like creature, passes near a blind salamander, they can feel out its location by sensing the ripples from the tiny feet of the amphipod paddling through the water. The salamander also has a very good sense of smell so it's able to detect if it's in an area with potential prey creatures nearby. When something good to eat is close enough, the salamander opens its big duckbill-like jaws, causing all the water nearby and any edible creatures to funnel into its mouth. The Edwards Aquifer below the San Marcos Springs is an immense honeycomb labyrinth of tiny passages. It's pretty easy to get turned around and lost, but the blind salamander appears to manage okay. There are five different caves and spring openings miles apart and scattered around the San Marcos area where scientists have found populations of Texas blind salamanders. That means that they are able to move in between the points through the subterranean passages of the aquifer. Pretty impressive. Nevertheless, it appears that the blind salamanders tend to not move around much if the ones we can observe in the aquariums are any indication. There's not a lot to eat in the aquifer. Other creatures to prey on can be pretty scarce, so they tend to conserve their energy just by staying in place until they sense something. I've heard they can go weeks or months without eating food. 
but we feed them more often here in the aquarium. It might seem like a pretty harsh environment to try to survive them, but the blind salamander seems perfectly suited to the subterranean water caves of the Edwards Aquifer. So suited, in fact, that it's developed a characteristic we call neoteny. As you heard earlier, most salamanders go through a sort of metamorphosis, where they grow lungs, strong legs, and skin that is suitable for living on land. But the blind salamander doesn't bother with any of this. It keeps its feathery gills for breathing underwater throughout its entire life, as well as toothpick-like legs that couldn't support it outside of the water. What does it gain by never fully growing up? It gets to live in an environment where the temperature and water quality are always the same. It doesn't have to worry about seasons, getting too hot or too cold, or even day and night. As long as water flows into the aquifer from the recharge zones and stays unpolluted, the blind salamander will remain in this environment for which it is perfectly adapted. Of course, if the aquifer does get polluted or lose its recharge zones or we take too much water from it, the blind salamander will have nowhere else to go but to extinction. That's one of the reasons we have them on display here in the aquariums, so we can raise awareness of the unique underground world of the Edwards Aquifer. Next, we're going to show you some of the tasks that we do to take care of our Texas blind salamanders on a daily basis. We monitor the temperature for the Texas blind salamanders here in the aquarium to make sure that it stays within the same parameters that it would be inside of the Edwards Aquifer. These chillers keep everything at about 20 degrees Celsius to match the ambient temperature of the water in the upper part of the Edwards Aquifer and Spring Lake in San Marcos. We use water directly from the springs to fill our endangered species aquariums. This ensures that their water conditions in captivity match that of their native habitat. Here at Spring Lake, we are fortunate enough to be able to feed our Texas blind salamanders a diet that is very close to what they eat in the wild. That's because we can harvest aquatic invertebrates that live in the lake, like these amphipods that are similar to those found inside the Edwards Aquifer. Although, these are not troglobitic like the Pex Cave amphipod that blind salamanders would encounter inside the aquifer. The Texas blind salamander is definitely the rarest and most unique organism we have on display here at the Meadow Center Discovery Hall, and I've enjoyed sharing more about it with you today. We're working to maintain these critical life support systems that keep our endangered species, like the blind salamanders, in conditions that simulate their natural habitats, so they'll be ready for you to see when the aquarium reopens. Thanks for watching, and be on the lookout for more feature features from the Meadow Center Aquarium in the near future.